Welcome everyone. Today in this video, I build a switchback staircase. So we're gonna have some serious fun today. We're gonna be looking at torch cutting, welding, fabrication, steel erecting, bolt connections, and even washers that squirt. So as you guys know, we're not in my machine shop today, as you can tell. My lease is up at the old building. This is a great opportunity to move into a new location and have a little bit more creative freedom. The project that we're gonna be working on is building a staircase. I have already built a mezzanine in this shop, so we need to get some stairs to get to the top floor. So I've decided to construct this mezzanine out of I-beams instead of wood. I have joists on three foot centers, and then I have I-beams that stand every 12 feet or so. And I constructed this in a about three days. We have a floor height of 13 feet and we have a length of 125 and a width is 25 feet. The general idea is I want to enter the staircase from the machine shop side, travel up the flight of stairs, hit a landing, make a U-turn, go up to the top of the mezzanine and be exiting the staircase to the machine shop. So we need to remove a section of these three joists. In order to support them, we need to have an I-beam that supports the ends of the tails. So as you can see, we need to build some stairs up here. I'd like to share that experience with you. So let's get to work. I need to locate the hole in the floor that I want to cut. So I'm starting out by snapping some wall lines to use as reference points and gathering the information I need to cut the iron. These are the little bits of leftover iron that I have from building the mezzanine. So I'm gonna utilize them to the fullest potential here. So this is a W12 by 22 beam. What that means is that it measures 12 inches from flange to flange. And then if you were to take a section that measures one foot long, it's gonna weigh 22 pounds. This beam is 25 feet long in length, weighing around 550 pounds. In my application, wall to wall tight is going to be 24 foot five. I need to subtract one inch from that measurement. I need room for weld bead. Half an inch on one side of weld bead and a half of an inch on the other gives me some clearance for the beam to fit past it. What we wanna do is get an inch and a half back from there and give myself the three holes. I'm gonna be using a Hogan mag drill to punch these holes and it uses an annular cutter, which is basically kind of like a little hole saw, but it has carbide tips and it's gonna punch a perfect little hole through the web of this flange. So in order to get this beam chopped up, I'm gonna be using the oxygen acetylene cutting torch. Now a quick tip when you're using a cutting torch on a concrete floor is to put some sort of protector on the concrete because the sparks, slag, or droppings of metal will actually chip and damage the floor. This is gonna be my weapon of choice because it's quick, simple, and fast and easy to chop up these beams. And since I have no mechanical bands on this facility, this is gonna be the best tool for the job. I like to start on the flanges, work my way top to bottom on each side, and then come back and connect the two cuts cutting across the web. So now the fun part, the beam's ready to go and to be installed. I want to put the beam on top of these pallets and then I'm going to hang the beam first with some welds off the existing joist. And then I'll come back in and stand the columns up to that. The welder I'm using is a Lincoln SA200 Pipeliner with eighth inch 7018 Lincoln Excalibur. And it's actually my preferred method of welding. I like it because it's reliable, simple, and it always works. I saw that the I-beam had a pretty good curve in it, which is pretty typical of I-beams. So in order to straighten it out, hooked a ratchet strap to one end of it and gave it a nice good tug. So as you can see, we're missing something. We need to make a column that's gonna hook to the end of the beam and touch the floor and support the whole load. And what we're gonna be using is what I call a knife plate. Now this is gonna provide a little bit of flexibility to be able to plumb the column up. You can take your existing beam, just set a depth stop, and now you can transfer that to the beam. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up welding it to the flange just like that. With 3 16 welding rod, I'm gonna do one pass on each side. I always prefer to weld in the flat position. So I like to position the beam on a 45. That way I get a nice big fillet weld when attaching the knife plate to the column. So now that I have the knife plate on the top welded, we need to work on the bottom and what we're gonna do to fasten it to the floor. So I'm using this cool little laser measure to get an accurate reading for the column length. So I need to cut this beam to length. Let me show you a cool trick on how you can cut thin plate with a big cutting torch. And it's gonna start by having it nice and square and then I'm just gonna keep the torch in the same position. I'm just gonna roll it. It cuts really fast so you don't have to wait so long. So this is just a simple end cap that we're gonna weld onto the base and that's gonna keep it a nice slim profile to be able to fit inside the wall. So 
So let's weld it on and get this baby installed. So I'm choosing to bolt the column and the beam together for simple erecting purposes because it's fast. I know that it's strong, I know it's repeatable, and that I can do all the welding on the ground which makes it really convenient. The location of these columns need to be perfect. For one, they're gonna be living inside a framed wall so that the drywall and framing can hide them, but also we're gonna be hanging a platform off of them. Now the bolts that I'm choosing to use are an A325 grade five engineered fastener. We can track the information about it all the way down to the foundry. Now the problem with them is that they need to be torqued to around 350 foot pounds. Pretty hard to get some leverage on them too. And in my case, I used an impact wrench to get them torqued. You can also use an actual torque wrench or there's some other products. So the other solution is to use a TC bolt. This is a pretty neat fastener because it has a little spline on the end that uses a special gun that you use to apply the torque and then the gun snaps off this little spline making a visual representation that the bolt has been torqued properly. So that's one option, they're a little bit more money but if your job requires it, well then this is a perfect solution for you. Another alternative is to still use the A325 bolt but use what we call a squirter washer. Now this washer will eject some fluid once it gets torqued to the proper setting, making a visual identification mark on the beam or column that has been torqued properly. This is what inspectors wanna see is this goo spread all over the place, which makes it pretty convenient. The downside is they're pretty expensive, around $3 a piece, they're a little bit more money. Now that the column is bolted to the floor and the girder up above is bolted in properly, I feel comfortable cutting off the joist and making a hole in the floor. So I prefer to do all the measuring and layout on the concrete floor. And I do this just by snapping some lines and then I take a nice bright green laser and I can transfer these lines up into the roof and that will give me a nice visual line where I need to cut the ends of the beams off. I'm taking great care in cutting these beams in one piece because I'd like to recycle this material for the horses a little bit later on for the stairs. Cutting the hole in the floor really isn't a big deal. Yes, it would have been easier to build this when I was building the mezzanine originally, but this is still a pretty good option. So there are now three little tails of joists hanging out there dangling into nothing, and I wanna be able to tie those and support them. So I'm gonna be cutting some angle iron and attaching them to the adjacent beams on the sides. It's really cold outside, so having this larger tip gives me a lot of preheat really fast, and I can almost cut just as fast with this than I can a bandsaw. I like to position my material to where I don't have to manipulate it too much. And in this case, I have both legs pointed down. This allows me just to make two quick swipes without having to move or roll the material. I'm choosing to use angle iron instead of a flat piece of plate steel for the knife plate because it's gonna gusset and strengthen the web of this joist. So I'm gonna be attaching the beam perpendicular to the joist. Now the proper technique to do this, because they want to share the same space, is to cope one of them. And that's removing a little piece of the two flanges that could interfere with each other. On one of the cuts, I did correctly with a nice, clean, smooth radii on the inside corner of the cope. On the other side, I didn't do so hot. I actually have an overcut condition from the torch where the kerf penetrated the corner. This is going to leave a stress fracture, and you don't want that. I'm going to be addressing this by welding it and blending it smooth when I have it up in the air so to eliminate any chances of this cracking or fatiguing in that area. I'm sure you've noticed by now the cutting torch in the background. And yes, these wheels are awesome and they're from a tank. So it's now time to make the landing for the switchback staircase. And I'm going to be repurposing the I-beams that we pulled out of the mezzanine floor for this. So this landing is going to be 10 feet long and about four and a half feet wide. They look like they just came out of a Richard Simmons aerobics class. These things are warped and bent all over the place, so it's pretty hard to get an accurate measurement. What really matters to me is that the top flange of these beams are all coplanar with each other and have no twist to them. So I'm using the monster square to accomplish that. I really like where I'm going with the platform here. I think it's gonna turn out really nice. But the next step we gotta do is get it in the air, make some posts so we can install it. So let's do that next. So one of my design criteria for this platform is to be able to have enough clearance to walk or put equipment underneath it. So I'm targeting a height of seven foot six. That's gonna give me adequate clearance to do whatever I want and also not have any posts in the way. So one corner of the platform is gonna get a hanging post that way I don't have any tripping hazards on the floor. Three of the other posts are gonna be buried inside walls, so those really don't matter too much. 
This platform is a key component to the installation of these stairs. I'm taking extra precaution to make sure it's at the correct height, it's level and true, because when I go to put the horses in, if anything's wrong with this platform, nothing else will line up. The next step is to install and manufacture this upper stair horse. It's gonna be by far the most challenging, not only in its fabrication and layout, but the installation also. For one, I'm by myself, so in order to accomplish this, I attach a choker to the midpoint of this beam. This is gonna allow me flexibility and control and be able to pivot the beam when I go to install it. And it also helps by getting it in between two pieces that could get wedged. So one of the cool design features that I liked about this switchback design is that when you get to the top of the stairs, that you're invited by seeing this big open space and being able to see all the tools and equipment and all the projects that are going down on the shop floor. I've decided to use a little bit unique, different style on how to manufacture the stairs. So I've chosen to break shape to form the step. Now these are gonna stack on top of each other and just really make some stairs rather quickly. And the way they get welded together is gonna to add to the overall strength. And this is kind of not a really typical style of stair, but I think this is gonna work well for my application. Another design criteria that I have is these stairs are actually gonna be blocking some sound that's gonna be coming out of the mechanical room. So with any brake shape, they're never gonna be exactly perfect. And the method I'm using to attach this is that I'm tacking the first stair, placing the second one on top of it, and the stair underneath has a nice good supporting rib that it gets welded to. I find that you can push or pull the stair tread and manipulate your stair just a little bit by using a Bessie clamp to meet your marks. And then you give it a nice good weld and then you just repeat the process over and over and over again. Now this is a unique design where the landing is the last step this actually saves me 11 to 12 inches of the overall run of the stairs. I'm really happy the way these stairs are coming together, but as you can see, we need to put some platform material in here. So let's do that next. I'd like to add some three by three tubing that I used from the post to be able to add some supports for the floor. And I'm just making a nice cope here that way. The top flange and the top of this tube are collinear with each other. This is gonna allow me a nice flat surface so when we put the boards on top, it's gonna have a nice clean look. So the wood of choice for this landing is gonna be this Apatong lumber. Its original design is for trailer decking, shipping container floors. It has a shiplap construction and measures about seven inches wide, and you can get them up to about 20 feet in length. The board measures about an inch and an eighth thick. It's extremely durable and tough stuff. I wanted to add texture to the floor, so I staggered step and had this random pattern. I really like this look. This is gonna be the decking on top of the mezzanine too, so I want it to match. I tried a couple different types of screws. One was a self-tapping screw where it needed no pilot hole, but that just led to lots of smoke and broken self-drilling tips, so it really didn't work very well. The best method of attachment was to drill a 7 seconds pilot hole and then to use the quarter 20 self-tapping screw to fasten it down, and now I have a lifelong permanent connection. I really wanted to stain the lumber, that way it's gonna help protect it from the elements, and they make this special stuff for Apatong specifically, and I think it looks beautiful when it's applied. Well, I really enjoy how the stairs have come together. It's pretty fun to take a CAD model and design and actually bring it to real life and have something we can actually stand on. Thanks for watching me build the stairs, now that I'm one step closer to getting moved into this new facility, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> One step closer. I'm 18 steps closer to getting this building ready to move in. <laughs> <I don't... laughs>